Welcome to the Polly King home and gallery. Polly lived in this beautiful turquoise home for 70 plus years. And she incorporated her artistic vision everywhere you go. But this is 670 Chilton Avenue. And we're gonna walk in on a snowy day um, and see some of the art. It might be a little bit hard, but even in the sidewalks, you can see the Lampier China that she included in the sidewalks. All along in here. And Don and his mom have collected all this wonderful sculpture as well. I should have probably swept. I forgot the uh, camp here, but we can do that too. It's okay. Welcome. So, this is it. This is it. <laughs> Welcome to the Polly King Gallery. <laughs> One of the favorite entrances of the world. These are all her posters she collected in her travels. These are all very old, but they're in good shape. A lot of wonderful posters. And you see Matisse, you're going to see a lot of things that look like that Matisse right in the, up in the top there. When you start going through Polly's art, you'll see a reminiscent of Matisse and a little bit of Bernard, Bonnard and a little bit of Cezanne and a little bit of everybody you're going to see. But these have been up since in November, 1960, that one is. Polly was inspired by everything, so welcome to the world of Polly King. With this wonderful sign, and you'll see that lovely little red horse often ends up in quite a few of her paintings. She created art from everyday inspiration. These two paintings, the first two you see of Polly behind you here, are done in Spain. This is probably one of the best genius kinds of things for someone to be able to get this much with these many colors in one little space like that and make it work. Mm -hmm. It's really, this is another inside still life. A lot of things going on. The one on the left, of course, was an outdoor, an outdoor patio in Spain. But these two kind of show you her, as I said, her genius, if you will, to get all this and all that in this, in this small amount of space. If she was known for anything, I think you'll be able to tell better when we get through the walkthrough, but you'll be able to see what she's all about with color because she did with color what, what most people really like to do with color and it, and it works mm -hmm. of course watercolor is the most difficult because you can't go over once it's mm -hmm. there it's your buddy you can't get rid of it mm -hmm. an oil painting you can, they can just keep going over and over and over with it you can't do that with watercolor mm -hmm. so i'd like to also point out that she painted the floors You'll see the floors, the curtains, the uh, shades. The staircase, but then this is Polly. This is our stunning Polly. Rembrandt, they said, painted himself 100 times. I think Polly King must have painted herself at least 50 times, closer to 100. 100. You're going to see many portraits of her, self-portraits of her. There's one right here when she was in the theater. When she was very young, she went to Carnegie Tech, which is the University of Pittsburgh now, but she also was in the theater. And there she is as the Queen of Hearts. It was in, in St. Catherine's art show, and there she was here. And she had to make a decision because she could have gone in the theater, but she stuck with painting and art. And and she's predominantly self-taught. Self-taught. Self-taught artist. You'll see that uh, when we talk about where she's been, we go through uh, some of the writings of her. She went to the Art Institute. She went to the uh, Carnegie Mellon, which was the University of Pittsburgh. Um, 
when you say self-taught, she had a lot of good friends who were good artists at the University of Buffalo, Buffalo State. And uh, but come and see, and, yep. and then you'll be able to get a better idea of what Polly King was all about. We did a series of note cards, and you'll see exactly so many of her paintings. Before you get too far, this is probably one of the most uh, telling little pieces done. Maybe you can read that if you can. For Polly, with admiration and all my best, and it's signed by Vincent Price, who was here. And he was working for Sears Roebuck at the time, and he bought five or six things for Polly for Sears. Here. It's extraordinary. And then her cards kind of tell it all, too. As far as oil, still life's this piece, I, 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 like, I like it as well as any of her big still lifes. Uh, it it kind of says it all, a lot of color, used it all the space, and makes it work. And of course, the, the oil painting right below is just a, with color, that's all. This, of course, itself is a Barbara Pavel, she was one of the Miss Made of the Miss Niagara Falls, had a Miss Made of the, Made of the Miss contest with in, beautiful Indian girl women. She, Barbara Pavel makes herself like an Indian woman, especially. But she was the Miss Made of the Miss, uh, Made of the Miss. You'll see three or four portraits. You're going to see more when you get inside the stairwell going up the stairs. You'll see, you don't see a lot of those, but that's industry via Polly King. One of the best, I, I feel, of the industry pieces when you get close to it and see so many things going on in black and white. Not a lot of them, but you'll see some. Another. She could paint eyes. The eyes, if you can get it on there, the eyes are the key. I know Sarah think, talks about the eyes all the time. And uh, there's a good example of them right there. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. She was in Buffalo, this girl lived in Buffalo. So Come right in. We're going to head into Don's salon. Make yourself comfortable. It's a snowy day outside, but you Ooh. still have wonderful north light. The light is the best in the mornings like this. And the studio we're going to go into, and where she has her cabinet, but her painting, where she did her most of her painting, did her portraits back in the studio with north light. You're going to see well, the paintings talk for themselves. Her, Sarah might have some questions on some of these when you start. She didn't bought the chess set. She judged a show, I think it was, and this got the prize, and she bought the chess set years ago. Just look at the fireplace, if you will. One of the best where she's painting the floor. The floor is upstairs. You'll see it when we get upstairs. And of course, the art park actors and actresses, my mother painted a for art park, but here, these are the these are originals. Uh, they were in the shows at art park. Above it, one of her I think her big paintings, um, Moon Song. It's called. You start singing a little bit like Moon Song. It looks like the moon. It's a wonderful piece. I'd like to point out her sculpture too. So she also. She did, of course. She. She did. She was a gem of an artist, but she, she sculptures. She did. She did black and note cards. See this fabric. These are all very old fabrics in the King family. She just used those to cover like a Madonna. The piece right in art next to it, right to it, was famous Notre Dame pre-fire before they had the major fire. I don't know if anybody had the opportunity to do a piece like that. And if we, we go right around, we see another piece of Notre Dame right there. Mm -hmm. but these are after the fire. And Notre Dame still now is going to be ready to, in six months to open up, I think, back mm -hmm. to its original work. 
I also like to point out her palette oh, yeah. that is hanging on the wall. I sit here a lot and I have surrounded myself with what some of the pieces that I like to be around and they make me feel better. And I tell people in the area or any friends, relatives, anybody, that if they want to feel, if they don't feel well, just come over, call me, come and come to the gallery. By the time you get through looking at my mother's art, you'll feel better. It's better than medicine. This is just an example of it in this one front living room. It used to be the living room, it used to be a couch right over the area where she used to sit and have tea with people in the afternoons, and then she'd have a, most all the time, sketch these people or paint these people. People used to talk about her flowers. She did flowers so well. Falls. A lot of the falls, of course, she said that's one in a lifetime, the falls, of course. The power project where you're now, there's another self-portrait of her. The piece right above her, The Seven and Candles, has been a very, very popular piece, one of the most popular pieces. It's just called The Seven. And uh, it's been in a couple shows. But my mother felt the paintings, she did paintings not to be judged or evaluated. They should just be enjoyed. There's a quote around here. You'll see that about enjoy the work, you know, not to be judged all the time. But as you look around this front living room, Sarah's dubbed it the salon, but the, the, my mother had uh, tea in the afternoon, many afternoons with people, friends of hers, and she would paint and sketch while she was painting. But the, the art re represented in this room right now is probably, is, it's a good idea, it gives you a good idea of the, the range, her range was so good. The power, power towers, the industry, we were the strongest concentrated industrial site in the country. The concentrated wasn't the largest, but it was concentrated all in very concentrated in two or three blocks. We, that's industry up there when you, and of course the industry, one on the green one on the left, you look, you see the towers in there, you'll see a lot of things going on in that. That's an acrylic piece. Acrylic dyes, dries very fast. When my mother went to Europe for eight or nine, ten years, and she painted mostly in watercolor because of the fact that oils don't dry so fast, it couldn't move the art around, whereas watercolor would dry very, very fast. And the acrylics would dry very fast. But that, the pieces on that wall, when you see the, the grass, uh, In Paris, the flower shop. Below it, I really don't know where it was. I think my mother made this refinery. It looks like a refinery. It can, it's in the eyes of the beholder what it really is. Because, But I thought the way she handled blues and greens and made them put come together, it's one of the best examples that I thought of it. As far as the overall paintings on that wall, when you go to the right, if you will, you talk a little bit about that one because you were the only person I know other than my mother was there. <laughs> okay. That piece right there. So this is a watercolor of the Alhambra, which is in Granada, Spain. And the Alhambra was, is one of the remaining Moorish uh, architectural treasures uh, that is still standing today that is filled with hundreds of thousands of mosaics um, and Polly captured that quite well um, and very difficult um, to be able to do that in watercolor. I think it's probably But one she was a prolific traveler. She was very prolific and she traveled and she painted. She had her sketchbook with her all the time and her pad with her all the time. You'll see if, uh, if you go back a little bit if you would, right? There's another self-portrait of my mother. She's around watching us all the time, Sarah. I always like to point out about Polly's self-portraits is um, the intensity of her eyes. Um, she was so full of life um, and tapped into an insurmountable amount of human potential. Yeah. 
Do you want to walk into, as long as we're standing yeah, up? I thought I, well, just, we should make a comment okay. on the, the watercolor of the, from Provincetown. This is on a hotel through the curtains in the room. Watercolor or, um, with the boats. She did a lot of water colors of the area, yacht clubs. And this was when she traveled to Provincetown. And we have a whole series of mm -hmm. Provincetown paintings. Behind Sarah, as we go back, people used to talk about her flowers, but these, this, an example, we have two or three hundred paintings more of flowers. You'll see, there's another wonderful oil. The piece right above it is a Leori Lamas. It was a sculptor. That's a acrylic cube that he did years ago when he lived in Terre Haute, Indiana. And my mother liked the piece so much, the original piece, that she bought the piece at the Albright. And it's an expensive piece of art. My kids share it with, they, with each other. They travel back and forth to different homes. But that's a wonderful piece of it. She's done about 30 or 40 paintings that the piece of sculpture you'll see in the portrait, in the, uh, so, uh, the, um, picture, the uh, still life that she does it. With, the, with that piece of flowers, of course. You're going to see flowers throughout the place. Interesting piece, we're going to talk about it after, but please note, this, uh, that's the original, black and white of Niagara Falls. It's a very small piece, but that's the original piece. I'm going to show you a blow-up of it. We have a very large blow-up of it. And the piece right to the right is a placemat. I've done maybe two or three hundred placemats of Polly's work, and uh, people like to be, use it as a placemat. They can hang it, they can frame it, do whatever what they want. I have about two or three hundred placemats of, of uh, notice where she has her signature in that. Can you see it? Can you right over there where she signed that painting? Very different. See it on the letter envelope? Is that it? I think so. Mm -hmm. Yes. Kind of different. Mm hmm. And anyway. she, she did it a couple different times oh, yes. on her travels. So if you see some of the art that she created in Spain, there's an envelope with Polly's name on it. 